Hey guys, what's up? It's the Snake Dude1814 here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to care for and set up superworms. So let's get straight into so it. So this here is my superworm tub. It is a little bit empty at the moment, and as I mentioned, this is also going to be a setup video. So what I did is I removed everything, and I will show you step by step on how to properly set up superworms. Now, one thing that I really like to point out is you want to give them a good layer of substrate. I like to use just standard oats because not only will they eat it, which pre-gut loads them, but then they can also burrow in it, and then again, it makes it actually easier to clean. Moving on to the initial setup, I'm just using a standard critter keeper, something that you would use for reptiles. I plan on upgrading to a large Rubbermaid tub so I can hold more. Unlike mealworms, superworms will actually not turn into beetles if you cram them in a sense. Obviously, you still want to provide space with cardboard like crickets so they don't eat each other. But the point is, is they won't turn into beetles unless they feel that they have enough resources to sustain oneself. So when you put a bunch of them together, they're sort of, in a sense, having mini competition for resources, which is what you want because that keeps them at the larval stage and prevents them from turning into beetles. As for the initial setup, it's really simple. As I pointed out, I've got a layer of oats in here that they can all dig in. You look like there's a bunch of them right here. So I've got about maybe 200 or so in here. And in fact, I'm probably going to have to clean out the oats soon because as you can see, there's already little bits of millet forming that I've gotten or they're feces. So I like to clean that out every month or so after they've really eaten through most of it, but there still seems to be quite a few oats. However, when it comes to cardboard, what I like to do is quite simply just throw in like a big crate here, maybe one over here. Really just scatter it around. It's sort of like crickets. You want there to be plenty of space for these worms to climb up onto and move around got something like this. I think this is like an egg holder. Throw that in the middle. And then one of these. And as you can see, they'll chew holes through it, which is perfectly fine because you want to replace the cardboard after a while. But that is pretty much how you set it up. Let's get on to feeding your superworms. When it comes to feeding your superworms, unlike dubia roaches, which are primarily fruit and vegetable, these guys will actually eat leafy greens as well as vegetables. As you guys can see, I've got some old broccoli here. Well, not super old, but to the point where I wouldn't feed it to the bearded dragon in a sense. The insects will eat it because that's how they've adapted. They're used to eating old or somewhat expired food. However, I try not to offer totally rotted food as I don't want to be feeding my lizard something that has eaten crap in a sense. I still want the vegetables as well as like these leafy greens here to be in ideal condition and really all you have to do is throw it in your setup like this. And from there they'll pretty much just eat the vegetables, chomp their way through it. I always like to do daily maintenance with them, just clean out any excess vegetables that have been eaten or anything that is starting to turn yellow and moldy. You do not want them to be eating that stuff. And just like that, you can have a happy, simple, easy to maintain superworm colony. Now, this only covers their care. I have not bred superworms, and I have not had experience breeding them, so I don't know too much on that topic. However, what I can tell you, though, is that really, as long as you keep a bunch of them in a... You, again, you want to give them space, but not too much to where they won't turn into beetles. They'll do just fine like this. They've got their greens cardboard to climb on, substrate to burrow in, and that is pretty much the essentials of superworm care. As for temperatures, they cannot be frozen, or should I say refrigerated like mealworms. I like to keep them at room temperature, so about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, uh, for my viewers in the UK, or if you don't read Fahrenheit as a temperature, I'm sorry, I don't know the conversion at the moment, but that is pretty much superworm care. Okay guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. I really hope y'all found it helpful when it comes to the care of superworms. Really, it's pretty simple. I mean, this video was relatively short. Anyways, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up and a like. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, feel free to comment below if you have any video suggestions. And check me out on all my social media pages. I have my Facebook, Instagram, and I believe, what's it called? Twitter in the description below. So definitely check that out. Until then, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see y'all in the next video. 
Adios.